Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back, and today we're going to be going over the Outlast Pulse Rifle, another weapon from the Joker's Wild, specifically Gambit Prime Reckoning Activities, and just like Spare Rations, these are getting ready to drop a lot more with the upcoming update. There are a couple things that need to be said about these Rapid Fire Frame 540 RPM pulses, and we'll explore those throughout the review. The Outlast does have a little competition, a couple do have random roles, the Solar Claws of the Wolf from Iron Banner, and the Arc Horrors Least that comes from the Corrupted Nightfall Strike. Each one of these have locked in scopes, each one of them can roll different perks than the other. And here shortly we'll talk about the perks for Outlast and some of the roles that you want to be looking out for. So let's go over the base stats, it has a range of 37, stability of 47, handling of 28, reload of 32, aim assist of 78, and a recoil directed stat of 60. And out of those three, Claws of the Wolf, Outlast, Horror's Lease, the Outlast has the lowest range, it has the lowest handling, and it's tied for the lowest aim assist. It does have this medium zoom scope that helps out with the range a little bit. The rapid fire frame in general has a couple of good qualities, for one, deeper ammo reserves. These types of frames are really good for activities in mid to longer distances, good for areas where you're kind of under leveled, it's nice to have that extra ammo. And it's also nice that when you spend the magazine, you get a fast reload. But it also has some very bad qualities, as we talked about, the 28 handling, the 32 reload, these frames, not just Outlast which also happens to be the lowest of the three that we're talking about today, they're very clunky. The one poor quality about them, they're very sluggish, they feel heavy in your hands, even though they don't really look like it. This changes what we want in our perks, this changes how we want to approach a roll. The handling is tied to your aim down sight speed, tied to switch speed, things like that. If you need to pull up your weapon in a heated moment, these stats don't allow it, and for your reload, unless you have a reload perk on your armor, you get to the end of the mag, or a perk on the actual pulse itself, the reload is abysmal. That gets us into the perks. For the barrels, we have eight options. Your usual suspects are in there, Arrowhead Break is nice, Chambered Compensator is nice, but the one you really want to look out for is Fluted Barrel. Fluted Barrel is the single most helpful perk that you can get on a 540. It greatly increases handling speed, it gives plus 15 to the stat, and slightly increases stability, it gives plus 5 there. Take a look here compared to my Horrors Least, and we'll talk about the full roll on my Horrors Least later on in the review. It does have Fluted Barrel, and getting that handling up is what these really need. Even a handling masterwork is a nice addition. For the magazine, the top four that you really want to look for are going to be Flared Magwell, Steady Rounds, Accurized Rounds, and Drop Mag. Each one of these helps with what you want to do with this particular pulse archetype. Some add stability, others range, Drop Mag for your reload, and Flared Magwell to bump up that very low reload stat. In the first perk node, we have Full Auto. This actually works on this archetype. Some players like it, some players need it. I personally look for other perks, but it isn't a bad choice. Outlaw, good perk obviously, but since we shoot a burst of three, the final blow needs to be a headshot. That doesn't happen as much as we would like to with a pulse rifle. It's not a precision weapon. Under pressure, it's good on these, it's undervalued actually, because you get to the bottom half pretty fast, and as you do, you get more accuracy and stability. So you spin the mag, get all those buffs, and then you get a fast reload because the frame. We have Feeding Frenzy, faster reload on kill, any kill, it could be a headshot or a body shot. It's not as fast as Outlaw, but it does a great job. I value and weight Feeding Frenzy over Outlaw on these. Then we have Rangefinder, one of the top tier perks for pulses, period. It adds to the zoom factor, adds to your range, makes it a little bit more sticky. In the second perk node, we have Rampage, great perk. Kill Clip, great perk. For PvP, I value it over Rampage. We have High Impact Reserves, it's not the best perk, but if you go with that philosophy of just spinning the entire mag, getting to a reload, it does its job. We have Demolitionist. Kills with this weapon generate grenade energy. Activating your grenade ability reloads this weapon from reserves. I love this perk and I love this perk for this pulse because it's an outlier. The others don't have it. It's really good for a grenade build and I've been using it on Sentinel Titan to get more suppressor grenades. The energy that you get back is small but it does help and it does give you more grenades. Also, because this thing has a slow reload, when you throw the grenade it fully reloads the magazine. And then finally Snapshot. Usually when we talk about Snapshot we kind of gloss over it as a good perk. It's very straightforward, but on this, it really helps its main weaknesses that aim down sights. It's a top option for it. It does have a curated role, and that curated role comes with Zen Moment and Kill Clip. Zen Moment is great on rapid fire frames, and it isn't featured in the main perk pool. It's a great role. 
It's hard to have a top overall roll because you can get a perk and pair it with multiple others to make it a good roll. The ones to look out for are going to be Rangefinder with really any of them. Rampage, Kill Clip, Demolitionist, Snapshot. Same goes for Feeding Frenzy, you can pair it with anything. And even a Under Pressure High Impact Reserves could really work. I do have four separate rolls here, we'll go over them briefly. Full Auto Snapshot, Drop Mag, Outlaw, High Impact Reserves. Again, it has some synergy, not the best roll, but it works. Outlaw and Kill Clip, it's always going to be great. And my favorite roll actually is going to be Feeding Frenzy Demolitionist. It has polygonal rifling, accurized rounds, and a handling masterwork. I put a radar tuner on it, and it's actually something for you guys to consider. Since it does have a kind of a slow aim down sight speed, it handles slow, it's nice to have that radar back. But real quick, let's go full circle back to Horror's Lease. This is one of my personal favorite weapons in Destiny 2. I do have a review for it down below. And it has those two main things we talked about at the beginning. It has Fluted Barrel and Flared Magwell. I could put on High Cows, but those two together, Fluted and Flared, take these frames to the next level. It makes them feel normal, if that makes sense. It has Headseeker and Kill Clip, a super rare combo, even going back to Destiny 1. Headseeker only really works on the 390s in Destiny 2, but what's really nice about this combo is the damage you get when you put them together, especially when you have Fall Off. To me personally, this is the recipe for these frames. Fluted Barrel and adding Flared is the other big bonus. It rounds them out and makes them 100% feel better in your hands, and I encourage you guys to look for it. The recoil direction of 60 is just fine. Counterbalance mods are about feel. Sometimes they make them feel better, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you want them to change the pattern of automatic weapons. I don't think it's necessary on Outlast. In Destiny 2, it's kind of a shame. You don't really see these being used. It goes all the way back to the Grasp and Clever Dragon. I've always loved those back in Destiny 1. These are weapons that put a lot of lead in your enemy's face. It does well, too, if you pair it with something like High Cal's to add to his fire rate. For PvE, these frames wouldn't be my first option. Maybe the Demolitionist roll if I was like on a grenade modifier. I do use them in activities where if I can't get ammo, I can't get close, I'm kind of at far. And those are usually where I'm underleveled because I use it for the reserves. PvP, it does 22 to the head and 13 to the body for a 0.8 time to kill. That requires 9 straight headshots. Very tough to do. Bygones has a 0.93. And you're going to be a little bit closer to that time to kill because you're going to be missing some headshots. I think these are great dueling weapons. They hold their own. And since that TTK is in that 0.8 to 0.93 area, you just keep spamming your shots. Precision hits are obviously what you want, but they still hold their own. The issue with these is that they share the same space as Not Forgotten and Luna's Hell. That's why range finder and range overall is important to push out that damage a little bit further. Most of your engagements are going to be in mid-range, and depending on your role, most engagements are actually going to have you set in aiming down sights. Because if you don't have the proper perks on there, it's very tough to pull up on someone out in the open. But what's nice about Outlast and this archetype is it does have a little bit of range to it. It can work on any map in the game. Again, most pulses can, especially the 390s, but most of your work with these are in that short to mid-range. You can do okay in the long range. And as you saw in the opening clip, you gotta be mobile. Lay the hammer down with it and just keep moving and strafing. And what's nice about Destiny is that there's so much variety. Some players like some weapons, while other players don't like that same weapon. I know some players that just don't like the rapid fire frames, and that's fine. We do have three good ones for random rolls, and if I had to rank them, I would go Horrors Least at 1, Outlast at 2, and Claws of the Wolf at 3. For me, the issue with Claws of the Wolf is going to be the zoom factor, combined with the fire rate, combined with the flinch you receive. It's just not a good look for me, I personally didn't enjoy it. I'm a collector though, and I'm also a collector of rolls that are unique, like Headseeker Kill Clip. Or in the Outlast case, Feeding Frenzy Demolitionist. But even if I didn't have Fluted and all the other perks that I have on Horror's Least, I would still rank it as 1, due to its base stats and its scope and its ease of use. Outlast is a good pulse. The more I played with it, the more I enjoyed it, the more it grew on me. But don't get caught up in the time to kill a 0.8 seconds. I mean, Redrick's high impacts have a 0.67 TTK. If the numbers on paper mattered the most, at all costs, you would see Redrick's in every single game that you play. You would see a heavy presence of them, but you don't. The truth is, these are in a tough spot, these rapid fire frames. They do have the TTK to compete, they're more than usable, but bygones, the 390s of the .93, the Blast Furnace has a .73 and they have more range. Players feel a little bit more comfortable with them. These are kind of like those, they have a relaxed time to kill and the whole goal with them is just to spam and strafe. In conclusion, if you're a fan of the 540s, this one has some really good perks, it has a good scope. Be on the lookout for Fluted Barrel as your barrel option. Demolitionist is unique to the Pulse Rifle class. Look for it as well, but overall, Outlast is a good addition to your loadout. So if you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for your continued support. What do you think of Outlast? What roles do you have? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.